Hey, I'm Darlene and you're watching a rapid fire art tutorial. When you add light and shadow to your line drawings, you can make your subject come to life by creating the illusion of form and depth. You can make a flat line drawing jump right off the page. In order to shade better, you'll need to practice three things. Pressure control, how to shade smoothly, and most importantly, understand how light behaves. I'm going to walk you through all three things and then we'll shade something together. Pressure control. Realistic shading is done by creating a series of values ranging from light to dark. The harder I press down on the pencil, the darker the strokes. Portraits displaying a limited value range can end up looking very flat, while portraits with a wider value range will pop. To have good pressure control, practice shading from one end of your sketchbook to the other while pressing harder and harder until the values get darker gradually. Another way to practice is to draw a long rectangle and divide it into several squares. Fill the squares from right to left. Start with the darkest value you can possibly make and work your way towards the lightest. It's important to maintain a consistent pressure between each back and forth stroke or each individual stroke. This will take some practice and concentration to develop the muscle memory for. If you're interested in the tools I use and want to learn more about the different pencil types, check out the link below. Some tools can make shading easier for you, but you absolutely do not need any special pencils to get started, because you can draw and shade realistically with pretty much anything that can make light to dark marks. Here, let me show you. I'm going to draw using this random stick I found in my kitchen. Once it's burnt, I can use it just like a regular pencil. My point is that any old pencil will do. There is no reason why you can't start shading today. Really, the most important thing is just to start. How to shade smoothly. To shade smoothly, try to eliminate major gaps between your strokes while maintaining good pressure control. Now, it's difficult to eliminate gaps if your pencil is sharp. So what you can do is wear the pencil down until the tip is dull or use the side of the lead to draw so your strokes are thicker. If you're shading a large area and want to avoid these dark stripes, avoid using your writing grip while pivoting at the wrist. Instead, use an overhand grip and pivot from your elbow and shoulder to achieve much longer strokes. Just remember to keep those strokes close together, eliminating gaps that can make your drawing look scratchy. Understanding light. Have you ever tried shading something over and over without it looking even close to your subject? For most beginners, shading is probably a guessing game. That's totally what it was for me. Until I learned a few basics about light, things just started making more sense. Knowing where to correctly add light or shadow can make a really big difference in how realistic your artwork will come across. I'm going to use a sphere to point out the different elements of light because the patterns are a lot easier to point out than a complex form, such as a nose for example. Here we have a plain wooden ball with a light source coming down from the top left. We have two distinct sides. The light side, which is facing the light source, and the shadow side, which is turned away. At the edge of our shadow, we have something called a core shadow which is a dark strip running along the boundary between the two sides. The core shadow is most visible on a white table because white is highly reflective. Light rays come down, bounce off the table and illuminates the shadow side of the ball, leaving a dark band. So as you can see, we have two types of light, direct light and reflected light. That's why shadows are rarely all black. There are so many things in the environment that light can reflect off of. 
walls, nearby objects, or even dust particles floating around in the air. Do keep in mind that black surfaces absorb light. So in this example, the core shadow is no longer visible. Going back to the image of the nose, can you tell which areas are lit by reflections and where the core shadows are? As mentioned earlier, light can reflect off of many things in the environment, but they have a difficult time bouncing their way into tight spaces, such as the area where the ball touches the table. This is called an occlusion shadow. And this is a cast shadow, which appears when a form blocks light from reaching another. In this case, the ball is blocking light from reaching the table. The cast shadow can tell you where the light source is coming from. All you have to do is trace the edges against your object. How many cast shadows can you find on the nose? Let's move on to the light side of the ball. On this side, there are only three things I need to point out. There's the core light, which is the area facing the light directly. Then there's the highlight, which is actually a reflection of the light source. This is the brightest point on an object. The edges can appear soft on matte surfaces, like this wooden ball, or hard on shiny surfaces, such as a plastic ball. And as unintuitive as it seems, the highlight can change position depending on where you're standing. The very last thing are midtones or halftones. Midtones are the darkest values on this side of the ball, where the edges start curving away from the light source. These areas receive less and less light the more they angle away. Can you point out the core light, highlight, and midtones on the nose? Shade with me! Let's shade an apple together without looking at any reference images. With our basic knowledge of how light behaves, we can essentially draw from our imagination. We might not be very accurate, but it's a great way to actively think about how light behaves. First, sketch your apple. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. Just try to get something down on your sketchbook. Try to keep your outlines as light as possible. My sketch is extra dark so you guys can see it better. We want it to sit on a table, so draw the edge of that table behind your apple. Then erase any unneeded lines. The next step is to determine where the light is coming from. Let's have one shining down from the top left. Draw a little flashlight or sun just to remember where it is. Where the apple blocks light from reaching the table, let's draw a cast shadow. You can use a ruler to find the cast shadow's length. Just align it to your light source and the edge of the apple. Now we know how long to draw the cast shadow. I'm just going to draw a long oval shape. Where the dotted lines touch the apple, we have our boundary between the light and shadow side. Let's say the apple is sitting on a white table. How do you think the shadow side will look, taking reflected light into consideration? Draw a core shadow, making sure the thickest section is the darkest. Where the apple touches the table, there's less light, so let's shade that area darker. Now that I've taken care of those two areas, I'm going to fill in the rest of the shadow side by adding a flat layer of graphite that is lighter than the core shadow. Once you're done, soften the transition between each area to avoid that hard edge between light and dark values. Now don't forget to soften the bottom portion as well.
If you're shading an object with a matte surface, an abrupt or immediate transition can indicate a sharp edge, while a gradual transition can indicate a round edge. Since cast shadows are darkest near the object they're being cast from, I'm going to shade the area directly under the apple darker than the far right. How bright do you want the light side of the apple to be? It's totally up to you. Pick a light value and then shade the entire space flatly. The next thing we need to do is blend the two distinct sides of our apple so it all comes together nicely. Where the form turns away from the direct light, add your midtones, which will immediately make the surface appear rounder. When you're done, use an eraser to indicate the highlight. If you want your drawing to pop out of the page, exaggerate some of those values to create depth. If your drawing consists of mostly a small range of light grays, try to get a bright highlight in there and some darker values. Now outlines can make a drawing look cartoony, so make sure they blend in with your shading or erase them as you go along. Definitely try to make your initial sketches as light as possible so they don't show through in the end. If they're too dark to erase, you can shade a dark background until they disappear. Practice. Place a few objects on a table under a single light source. Observe the patterns of light and shadow on each object. Understand what you're looking at and try to draw the scene in a fairly organized manner. It can help to pick an object up and turn it around to study it from different angles. If you want a bigger challenge, ask a willing friend or family member to be your study subject. Use only one light source on his or her face. It really helps to draw people that you know very well. And that's a wrap, guys. If you're already subscribed to my channel, thanks for helping me get the silver play button. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that big red button down below. Let me know if you like this format and if you want more shading-related videos.